And so the story begins billions of years ago, back when the Minecraft universe was a relatively new creation as worlds were just starting to be developed into the places that we recognise today. However, the world that we'll be focusing on right now is one that you've probably never heard of, and so I direct your attention to World 606. Now, as the name suggests, this world was the 606th world to be created, and so for that reason, the spirit or the god of this world was hence named Spirit 606, and things were going very well to begin with, as that spirit was able to develop his world into a majestical realm, with landscapes of raw beauty, achieved by the jagged spires of vividly coloured terracotta piercing into the dark yellow sky of the world, along with millions of mesmerising meandering rivers splitting the twisted towers and separating the soft red sand that covered the land. It was amazing, but this was just the beginning, as Spirit 606, after spending centuries developing his world into that wonderland, began on the mission of creating life within his world. Now, his first few attempts failed, and so, for that reason, dead bushes littered the landscape, constantly reminding him of those failures. But, still, all was good, as it was only a few years later that Spirit 606, with consistent hard work along with the constant reminder of his failures, had his first successes with creating life, as he was able to create self-sustaining life within those magnificent rivers. And so, for that reason, those rivers slowly began to glow in a light green hue, as that primitive life was beginning to adapt to that water. This was just perfect, and Spirit 606 was just so happy to see his world developing as it was, and he soon hoped that those basic life forms would evolve and adapt so that they could inhabit this land, perfecting it in ways that he just couldn't even imagine. Well, that's what he hoped would happen. However, things were not going to go as he intended, as it was only a mere few centuries later, while Spirit 606 was just wandering through his world, watching on as those first primitive life forms began to take form, that a wave of red corruption arrived. Now, that spirit had no idea what caused that wave, nor did he know how it got here, and there was little that he could do to combat it when it arrived, as the moment that, that evil wave of corruption hit his world, everything arose, and the sky was consumed in a shadowy fog. Now, luckily, everything unfroze in just a few seconds, but by then, it was too late, as that evil wave had travelled far beyond the scope of that spirit by that time, and so he couldn't go investigate it, no, instead he just had to deal with the consequences of that wave, namely the darkening of his skies. But it was going to be okay, as really this wasn't going to be all that difficult, as after all, Spirit 606 was a god, and so it would only take him a few seconds to remove that dark fog that was starting to cover the skies. However, yet again, his plans for the future weren't exactly accurate, as just when he was about to remove that fog by using his magical powers, a strange glowing red book fell down from the sky. That was weird, 
and so Spirit 606 was very confused, as he didn't create that book, and he was the only form of intelligent life here on the surface of his world. And so, who created that book, and why was it here? And well, that spirit very foolishly decided to investigate, and so he began to walk over to it. However, the very moment that he laid his hands onto that book, pure evil and immorality began to course through his blood, and he began to corrupt and die. Now, that spirit tried as hard as he could to resist this, but there was very little that he could do, as that book was just so powerful and was fueled with pure evil. And so, for that reason, his outer casing began to dissolve, as Spirit 606 began to transform into a devil. Oh no, he couldn't let this happen, and so knowing that he was doomed, if that evil took a hold of his soul, he attempted to use all of his powers to free himself. And it was working, as that evilness began to lose, as he began to glow, and his outer casing was starting to return. But it was then that the evil began to resist, and was starting to fight back with more strength than the spirit possessed. And so, maybe this was it. Maybe he was going to die. But no, he couldn't give up, as there was one thing that he could do to potentially stop this curse, and that was to sacrifice his powers. And so knowing that if this failed, he would be doomed to suffer a long and painful death at the hands of that evil, the spirit tried as hard as he could to activate every single power that he had, and he used them all with his full might to fight back against that evil curse. And well, thankfully, it worked as after a few minutes that demonic book was no more and he was freed from all that evil but that didn't mean that he was okay as spirit 606 was barely alive as that conflict with that demonic book had almost killed him and worse than that due to that final offensive move spirit 606 had just lost most of his powers, not to mention the loss of his godly outer casing, and his glowing white skin, well it turned into pure black shadows, as that evil curse was able to injure him permanently in his final spiteful attack. Also, due to the loss of all of his powers, he was no longer able to cope being a giant, and thus he was forced to shrink down to a tiny stature of a mere two blocks tall. And so, that was it. He was no longer a god, nor a spirit, nor anything else of value, as he was now nothing more than just an entity. More specifically, Entity 606. But also, no, not entirely, as his eyes still glowed, meaning he still had excellent vision. Also, he still retained all of his previous knowledge, and thus he still had the intelligence of a god. Not to mention the fact that he retained his ability of flight, and so it wasn't all that bad for Entity 606. Well, actually, maybe it was. As after he just stood there for a brief moment, Entity 606 decided to fly up into the skies of his world so that he could observe the damage done and could understand what needed to be improved. 
However, when he got up there into the sky, he was just completely horrified with what he saw, as that shadowy fog that had just arrived only a few hours ago. Well, it now consumed the entirety of the sky and the sun, stealing away all natural light from his world. And so he just hovered there, thinking about it, as he couldn't just get rid of that fog, as he didn't have the power to do that anymore. However, worse than that, he couldn't even float there for too long, as the strong winds of his world were blowing freezing air at him. And well, as he was a mere fraction of his former self, this cold air was a genuine threat to his life. And so, he was going to die, and thus Spirit 606 was forced to fly down to the surface of his world. But. Even then, it was still too cold, and so for that reason, he began to burrow his way into the rock formations of this world that he once loved. And then, once inside, he took some of that yellow terracotta, and he made a small suit out of it, so that he could stay warm in this new sun-deprived era of his world. But then, after that, there really wasn't much else that he could do. And so for that reason, he just began to slowly build on that artificial cave, making it slightly more comfortable for his life of suffering. And then after that, he was forced to go out onto the surface of his world, where he would have to forage for those dead bushes. And he would have to try and eat them in order to stay alive. And so after that, he just had to spend his days collecting those dead bushes, eating them for survival, pressing that subscribe button, and then sleeping the dark nights away in that cave. And that was repeated every single day. So, it was a very dull life, and worse than that, all life on the surface of his world was dead, with the exception of him. As all those rivers that were once teeming with life had dried up, and so there was no hope for any life to re-emerge. So really, he failed as a spirit, and he felt that he deserved to suffer like this, as now he was nothing more than just another meaningless entity in the endless expanse of the Minecraft universe. And so he lived that same depressing life constantly, every day, being convinced that he was nothing for millions of years. Until one day, when everything would change for Entity 606, as it was on that dark morning, while Entity 606 was just standing there in his cave, thinking where he went wrong in his life, that he heard it, a loud roar. Hold on, what was that? He wasn't causing that to happen. And so, Entity 606 ran out of his cave house and began to look for whatever made that sound. But he couldn't see anything. Oh no, maybe he was starting to go insane and was starting to hear things that weren't really there. This was it. He thought he was going to die now. But then he heard it again. And this time, he realised that the sound was coming from above, and so for that reason, Entity 606 began to look up, and so it was then that he saw it. It was a giant glowing purple window, and it looked almost like a portal. He was shocked by that strange sight, as he hadn't seen any light coming from the sky in a very, very long time. 
And so he was certain to get rather excited, thinking that this era of darkness was finally over. And so, for that reason, Entity 606 began to fly towards that mystical purple portal. And he was just amazed with what he was seeing, as he could see this strange other land on the other side of that portal. And it was unlike anything that he had ever imagined. And so, he was awestruck, and thus, he quickly made a decision to fly into that purple window, thinking that other parts of his world had developed even in the absence of him executing his powers as a spirit. However, as soon as he went into that portal, he realised that it was not his world, but rather another, and when he crossed the border between the two, his head began to spin, and he began to feel as if he was being sucked into this other world, and there was no escape, as he was being pulled in with just so much force, but luckily he wasn't hurt by any of that, and in just a few hours he arrived on the surface of the end. Now, he went to look back at that window to see his world from this new perspective. However, by the time that he had landed on the surface of the end, that portal to his home world was no more. And so it was then that he just stood there in the end, thinking what he should do next. As he just never thought that he would be in this situation, but he wouldn't be standing there for too long as there was a dragon flying directly towards him, and it was roaring. Oh no, that was where the sound came from, and so the entity then began to run as fast as he possibly could to try and get away from that beast, as he believed that he would die if that dragon struck him. And well, very luckily, he was able to dodge his attack. And so, he was safe. Until that dragon began to release orbs of death at him. Now, Entity 606 tried to fly away at this, but he just couldn't. As the gravity here was just too strong, and so all he could do was just run away from that monster, and away from all those orbs of death. And so, over the next hour, he just ran around in circles on that tiny floating island, trying to avoid the dragon's attacks. But, eventually, he realised something. That monster was receiving his powers from these mysterious floating crystals, and there were only ten of them, each being separated on pillars of obsidian. And so, thinking that they were the source of the dragon's power, the entity had an idea, as maybe to kill that dragon, all he had to do was to just destroy those crystals. And so, Entity 606 manually began to mine the obsidian on those pillars in an attempt to create stairs up those spires. Now, just creating the first set of stairs took him several days, with him constantly having to move around in order to avoid the wrath of that dragon's attack. But, still, his plan was working, and after a few days, he was able to mine out that staircase, and once he got to the top of that spire, he was ready to destroy that crystal. However, as soon as he punched that crystal, it exploded. That was great. However, it also sent him flying up into the air. 
Oh no, this was it. He was going to die now, as he knew that he wouldn't be able to survive that fall. And so, he closed his eyes and braced for it. But after a few seconds, he wasn't dead, nor had he hit the ground. No, because it was at that moment that he could, once again, fly somehow. And so, not knowing if this was just a mere temporary surge in his powers, he made his way over to all of the other crystals as fast as he possibly could. And in just a few minutes, they were all gone. However, his prediction was wrong, as that dragon, while he had taken some damage, was still alive, even with all those crystals removed. And so, that left Entity 606 no choice but to fight the dragon by hand if he wanted to be freed from him. And so, the fight began. And over the next few hours, he and that dragon engaged in a battle unlike anything that the universe had ever seen. And, after several hours of many close encounters with death, he was finally able to kill that dragon. But, after he had defeated that monster, Entity 606 realised something. He was trapped there, on that island, and there didn't really seem to be much else here in this dimension, and so... For that reason, he was going to be stuck here, all alone, forever, and there was nothing that he could do to stop that. But, no, maybe there was something that he could do. Because, just as he began to believe that he was doomed to live a life confined on this tiny island, he saw that there was a slight glow coming from the nest of that dragon. And so, it was then that Entity 606 flew over to that nest to see what it was, as there was no glow there before this moment. And well, what he ended up seeing shocked him, as he saw a portal. Now, he wasn't sure if he should go inside it or not as it did seem to be rather ominous, and he did consider the possibility that this was the final attack from that dragon, aimed at killing him from the grave. But, what if that wasn't the case? What if this was a portal that could lead him to a paradise? And well, seeing as there was nothing else in this world, and he would be doomed to eternal suffering alone regardless, he decided, why not? And so, he ran into that portal. But, as soon as he did that, his world went dark. But, just a few minutes later, it was all bright once again, as he had just arrived in a whole new realm. And even better than that, he had just arrived in the best realm in the entire universe, as he was now standing in the overworld. And so, Entity 606 then began to explore this strange overworld. And well, he was very quickly amazed with all that he witnessed, as there was a beautiful blue sky with fluffy white clouds within this world, as well as luscious green grass and flowing rivers and detailed landscapes and giant caves. But none of those things could compare to the most impressive sight that he endured while on this new world. No, as he quickly saw that there was life here, but not just any life, complex life. He just couldn't believe it. And so he wanted to go to the spirits or gods of this world to ask them how they did this, and to hopefully get some help from them. And so for that reason, he began to manually dig a massive ravine into the ground. And then he attempted to call upon the spirits using the limited powers 
he had left. And to begin with, he thought it was working. As he began to hear something, it was a buzz, and it was getting louder and louder and louder, and it was echoing all across his artificial ravine. Yes, this was it. The spirit was coming to him. But nothing happened, and the sound quickly went away. And so Entity 606 quickly assumed that their spirit just didn't care for him. And well, just a few minutes later, a storm began to consume the sky, and the world was plunged into darkness. Oh no, this terrified Entity 606, and so he flew away as fast as possible so that he could hide, and he was just bracing for suffering. However, little did he know, that was just a normal storm, and it wasn't that dark. But more importantly, there was a group of these creepers, and they were heading directly for his ravine as they were actually the gift that the spirit was sending him as the spirit saw this entity and was willing to help him. However, Entity 606 was never going to receive that gift as he was just long gone now and the overworld spirit wasn't going to give it again. And so this meant that the gift was now going to be given to the world. And let's just say, the overworld was not expecting what was to come because of those creepers. But, if you want to learn what happened next because of all that, well then, you'll need to watch this video.